2023 is almost over, which means it's time to update my credit card roadmap for 2024. I recently did a video where I audited my wallet, ranked my cards from worst to best, and then I also touched on whether or not I would be keeping some of these cards moving forward. But in today's video, I'm going to take that one step further and actually reveal my decisions that I'm making for my credit card collection going into 2024. In one of my first ever videos earlier this year, I did actually make a mini roadmap for the rest of this year, but that did not work out as planned. I had originally decided to grab the Amex Gold, the City Custom Cash, and the Built MasterCard. I did end up getting the Built card, but I was unable to get a bonus for the Amex Gold, and I've since decided that I just don't even really need that card to begin with. And the City Custom Cash has just fallen a little bit below some of the other cards that I want to get. But since June, I have not opened a personal credit card. The reason why I have held off on applications is I want to be able to get approved for the Capital One Venture X, or if I can't get that card, the US Bank Altitude Reserve. Both Capital One and US Bank are notoriously stingy when it comes to credit card approvals. And at least in Capital One's case, there's really no set rules of who gets approved and who doesn't. There are guidelines like not opening any cards in the last six or 12 months, but Capital One has made their application criteria very secretive, so we don't really know for sure. Some people get approved with perfect credit scores and credit reports, and other people will get Capital One cards like it's nothing. In 2023, I opened two personal cards and two business cards. I got the Blue Business Plus as my first ever business credit card in August, and then the following month, I got the Hilton Honors business credit card. Luckily for me, I did not get a hard pull on my credit report for those two Amex cards because I already had a blue cash preferred with Amex from the previous year. Since I use these business credit cards very responsibly, they don't report to my personal credit, which will help me maintain a 06 status as I go into 2024 and hope to get one of those two cards that I mentioned earlier. Unfortunately for me, if I did end up getting the Venture X or Altitude Reserve, it would burn another 524 slot, which means that I would not be able to get another Chase card until October of 2024 because I was approved for the Sapphire Preferred back in October of 2022. But on the bright side, there's really no Chase cards that are pretty appealing to me, at least right now. And one final note before we get into the cards on my roadmap for 2024, I want to slow down a little bit in 2024. I had a pretty high velocity in the second half of 2022, and bleeding into the beginning of this year. So I definitely want to be able to focus on cleaning up my credit reports a little bit and refining the setup that I already have and not bring too many new cards into the equation. So as you might imagine, the beginning of my next credit card roadmap is going to be a little bit boring. I'm going to force myself to continue gardening for a few more months at minimum because I want to maximize my chances of getting approved for one of these two premium travel credit cards that I've been looking at for some time now. I'll be applying for the Venture X at some point during quarter one of 2024, but probably closer to the end of the first quarter. By mid-December of this year, I will have had zero personal credit card approvals in the last six months. Now we can add a few more months on top of that when I apply towards the tail end of quarter one. This will also help me improve my three credit reports because Capital One will pull all of them. However, a lot of people have been able to freeze Experian and then Capital One will just pull TransUnion and Equifax and still give you approval or denial. So I guess I'm going to try that because I do have four inquiries on my Experian report right now. But by the time I apply, none of them will have a detrimental effect on my credit score. And I'm sitting at about 760 across the board on all three bureaus as of right now. So hopefully this will allow me to bump up that score a little bit just for my own peace of mind. Now that we've gotten those items out of the way, I want to discuss why I'm applying for the Capital One Venture X next year rather than some of the other premium travel credit cards on the market. Put simply, the Amex Platinum's annual fee is just too high for me to justify with the credits that I would actually use. There's some of them that I just would not use entirely, so I just can't justify it. The Sapphire Reserve is my fail-safe option in case I can't get approved for the Venture X or the US Bank Altitude Reserve. 
I will be able to use the $300 credits for travel, but outside of that, I'm not really able to recuperate much of that $550 annual fee, so it's not as appealing as the Venture X or Altitude Reserve. The one reason that I still think the Venture X would be a better fit for me than the Sapphire Reserve, the failsafe option, is the $300 credit that I can use. It's a lot easier to justify against a $395 annual fee rather than $550. And also, because I live in Washington, D.C., my home airport is Washington Dulles, which has a newly opened Capital One lounge. Otherwise, the Venture X would be just a little bit less appealing. Now let's talk about U.S. Bank. If I'm not going to get approved for the Capital One Venture X, I need a backup option, and in this case, I'm going to try for the Altitude Reserve. Of course, US Bank is also not an easy lender to get approved for a card with, so it's another gamble, but I'm willing to take it because I do, of course, have that fail-safe option of the Sapphire Reserve. The Altitude Reserve has eight passes to Priority Pass lounges, so it's not unlimited, which is kind of bad, but at the same time, I can add those passes to my 10 passes that I get from my Hilton Honors Business credit card, which should be enough in theory for the entire year. And I guess that raises the question, just how many lounge visits do I need every single year? If I get 18 between the two of these cards, where does that leave me when it comes to take trips, either by myself or with my fiance? Well, if my fiance and I took four trips every single year and were lucky enough to have a lounge on either end of those trips, we would use all of our lounge passes except for two extras that I could use for a different trip. And honestly, that does fit our travel schedule, at least one that we would be taking together and therefore being able to use airport lounges together. Obviously, at this price point, it'd be much better to get the Venture X and have unlimited, but... In my personal situation, it would be a perfectly fine alternative. There's also that $325 combined dining and travel credit that I would definitely use, probably even just use it accidentally. It's very forgiving when it comes to what you can and can't use it for, which is great. And then lastly, I am actually okay with no transfer partners, totally fine with getting 1.5 cents per point when booking through the Altitude Reserve Reward Center. For me, the majority of my redemptions have been for about 1.5 cents per point. A lot of my trips, I have very specific dates that I need to take, so that restricts my options and I'm not getting some crazy redemptions. But at the same time, I don't particularly care about cents per point, and I'd be totally fine with the US Bank fixed 1.5. And then, of course, there is also the three times multiplier for mobile wallets, which would be a game changer for me, and it could theoretically replace a few of my cards in my wallet that I have right now. Part two of my roadmap is going to involve which credit cards I'm going to either downgrade or cancel outright, and a little bit of a reimagining of my no annual fee supporting cast cards. I'm going to go about this chronologically. So we're going to start with cards that can be canceled as soon as possible, and then I'll include some specific months next year that I'm going to look at downgrading and or canceling some of my cards. So first up is ideally right now, and that is to cancel my second customized cash rewards credit card. I don't have a use for this card at all because I already have another one. So I, I never really use the second one as much as I would like. And frankly, I don't use the first one as much as I would like. I think it's time to cancel the card because I'm because I'm honestly a little bit tired of having to put some charges on it once every so often. And of course, it would still stay in my credit report for 10 more years, and my average age of accounts would not suffer until then. And by that point, I don't think it's going to matter. My credit utilization also shouldn't take too much of a hit because the credit limit on this card is only $3,000, and I have quite a bit more in total credit limits that would help offset this. And I also only use... 1% or less usually of my total credit limit, it shouldn't be a big deal. In July of 2024, I'm going to have to decide what I want to do with the Amex Blue Cash Preferred. It has a fee of $95 and I have since renewed it for its second year, but going into year three, I don't think I'm going to be able to justify it based on the amount of spend that I put on the card, as well as the spend that I would have to put on other cards when I'm earning sign-up bonuses. The Blue Cash Preferred just does not get used as much as I would like, and it doesn't always get that full 
$400 to $500 a month in grocery store spend, again due to sign up bonuses. I will downgrade it to the Amex Blue Cash Every Day, which will allow me to have 3% cash back on my groceries instead of 6, but it's still something and I wouldn't be forced to use my customized cash rewards credit card, which would only get me 2%. This card is definitely more of a bridge card to another card I have on this list, so that's why I'm downgrading rather than canceling outright. In October of 2024, I am going to downgrade my Chase Sapphire Preferred. I thought about doing it this year, but I did keep it for a second year, but I'm certainly not going to keep it in year three. Of course, if I have to go the last resort option, I will keep it as a Sapphire Reserve, but otherwise it will be downgraded to a Freedom Flex. I'm not going to cancel the card just because it has a $20,000 credit limit, and canceling it might affect my total credit utilization a little bit more adversely than I would like. And then in November or December next year, I am going to cancel my original Chase Freedom Flex. I'm approaching one year with the card now, and I'll probably cancel before two years, even if it is a no annual fee card. Again, I'm looking to simplify my setup a little bit, not have to worry about which cards need to have a small charge on them and which ones don't. And before you go at me in the comments, I know that having multiple Freedom Flexes can be beneficial, especially if you're maxing out like a quarterly category on one card. You can then do the same on the second Freedom Flex, but I personally don't see myself doing that anytime soon. The final part of my roadmap will be the one other personal credit card that I want to apply for around this time next year. And this card will be the Saver One. It's going to replace the Blue Cash every day as my grocery store card, even though it earns the same amount of cash back, but it also will be my dining card and my entertainment card, all of which will be earning 3% cash back. And so by this time next year, my setup will look like the following. Either the Venture X at $395, the Altitude Reserve at $400, or the Sapphire Reserve at $550, followed by the Hilton Honors Business Credit Card. These would be my annual fee credit cards. My supporting cast would be the Built Credit Card, which is an awesome card in my opinion, and is really more of a superstar in its own right. Of course, the Saber One, so main Capital One is nice to me. My Blue Business Preferred for my business expenses. The Blue Cash Every Day as that bridge card between downgrading the Blue Cash Preferred and acquiring the Saver One. And then the Freedom Unlimited, the Freedom Flex, my original customized cash rewards credit card would be in the sock drawer. And I guess I would add the Blue Cash Every Day to the sock drawer after it serves its bridge card purpose. Well, everyone, that concludes my credit card roadmap for 2024. What does your roadmap look like next year, if you have one? I'd love to know, so please leave a comment below. I appreciate each and every one of you as we continue to build out a community together on this channel. And I'm excited to see where we can all go together in 2024. I've been Josh, take care, and I'll see you next time.